If we could just uh, start off with you, Enver, um, there's going to be a deadline today at close of banking. What exactly does that can have a bearing on Pomozzi? Yes, uh, Chris, just to put you into the picture, we had a, or I had a very fruitful meeting with both Mr. Ndaba and Sele and Mr. Kuebus Deploy, as well as Mr. Ken Stienkamp last Thursday. And uh, a request was made as to the liquidators considering the restructuring proposal that management has put forward with the China Africa Development Fund. Uh, the difficulty we have, of course, is that because Harmony have suspended their negotiations with the joint provisional liquidators, we have now run out of funds completely for care and maintenance for the month of September as far as the free state operations are concerned. So I called upon Mr. Ndaba and Sele and Mr. Kuebus Deploy and Mr. Ken Stienkam to provide the liquidators with an amount of uh, approximately 11 million rands for care and maintenance for the month of uh, September for the free state operations so that that would then give them an opportunity to do their due diligence or the due diligence that needs to be done by the China Africa Development Fund. That care and maintenance amount is just for the month of September. Uh, if, it, if that money is made available by close of banking business today and if the, if the due diligence is not completed by the end of September and if it goes into October, then the joint provisional liquidators will require further funding to uh, approximately a further 11 million rands for the month of October for care and maintenance. Now why this is very important is because we were on the verge of signing the deal with Harmony. In fact, the, the morning Two weeks ago on a Friday when Harmony made the announcement that they had now suspended negotiations, the joint liquidators had in fact met and were about to sign the, the agreements with Harmony. The way the agreements were structured is that there would be an amount of 20 million rands that would be available to the liquidators almost immediately on the signing of those agreements to utilize for care and maintenance going forward so as to give Harmony an opportunity for approximately two to three months for the, for the mining licenses to be transferred to them and then the rest of the deal would have been consummated. So Ndaba, you're a CEO, what are your fears now for Pamodzi, bearing in mind what we've just had? Yeah. I think uh, Koba is going to answer uh, the financial issues. My, what I want to say here, we've always been blocked to go into a due diligence, especially in free state. And we came with a, a group solution. And the reason for blocking was, was that Harmony uh, has a right that nobody must go into due diligence. And then that's the reason that I called Enver after Harmony has pulled out. When I call Enver, I ask him that I want to meet and then we can solve this thing once and for all. And I think uh, we had a good meeting. Uh, but then uh, Enver suggested that care and maintenance, we understand that. And the COVAS has worked on that uh, care and maintenance issue. Uh, it is part of the fact of the deadline, which is a bit short, but uh, there's something that we've actually worked on, which is a, a bigger plan. But my problem with the liquidators uh, is that I since discovered through some uh, uh, journalists this weekend that when I had a meeting with Enver, he had actually written a recommendation to the unions, including the ITC, which happened on the second, that Pamuzi uh, proposal uh, must be out of the window, and then Aurora must actually be uh, the preferred a black stopper if Hamwin doesn't come on board. And when I met him, he never mentioned that to me, which is quite disappointing to me, that uh, we were taken out of the process, even not being given a chance to do uh, a due diligence. And I got this thing this weekend, and I've got documents, uh, that the documents would come from liquidators. So all what we need is impartiality. What are you going to do about this? No, I'm going to talk to Enver about this uh, after this meeting because when I met him, uh, it came to my notice that uh, this thing, this document has been written already, that we, uh, the Chinese money, uh, is not good for this, uh, uh, for, 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 for to save these mines, and I don't know from what point of view, but the document was written already. So after this, I want to sit down with him because it's there where I felt that we're not treated very, very fair, and secondly. Another issue that I also want to discuss with him is the fact that Aurora has been in, those, in that mine. It, immediately, uh, these guys got suspension. On Saturday, Aurora were given the privilege 
of going to the mine. Why does Pamuzi has been blocked to go and have a look at the mine? And bearing in mind this confusion here, can I turn to you, Kourbis, as executive director? What kind of shape is the Pomozzi Group in to go forward now? Are you talking about the Pomozzi Group or are you talking about Pomozzi Gold? Pomozzi Gold, sorry. Pomozzi Gold. I yes. think um, as far as Pomozzi Gold is concerned, um, the meeting we had with, uh, with Enri Mutala was, you know, as Ndaba said, very fruitful. We do understand that we need to put care and maintenance money into these mines. Uh, you know, to sustain them now that Harmony has pulled out. And you know, Harmony, of course, would have provided the care and maintenance as, as Enver stated. The issue we have is any funder coming in, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's awkward for funders to put money in before they do due diligence. But we, you know, we took the challenge on board. We've already had significant and, sorry, rather extensive discussions with CADF on the matter. And uh, we will actually meet with Enver after this um, to give him progress. But uh, we believe we've made a lot of progress and uh, that we'll soon come up with, with the funding. And just quickly here from Enver, I mean, you've heard what the gentlemen have said. Uh, they're not happy in certain ways. What do you say? Well, I must say that I'm quite surprised, absolutely surprised to hear from Mr. Ansele that there's some sort of a document floating around where the liquidators have indicated to the IDC that this is uh, the, the, the restructuring from, from Pomozzi is not going to work. I'm not aware of any such document. And I want to make it very categorically clear Mr. Ansele is totally incorrect when he says that they were not given an opportunity. They were always given an opportunity. When we started the bidding process on Orkney, on the Free State, Standard Bank, who are the agents of the liquidators, invited, categorically invited Pomozzi Gold to say, if you guys have a rescue package or you can raise funding from somewhere, please come and be part of this process. Nothing, we heard nothing from them. On the eve of signing the agreements with Harmony, there was this huge outcry in the media and in the press to say that we are not giving them an opportunity and they've now raised the money from, from or the funds from China Africa Development Fund. The letter that we received from the China Africa Development Fund was nothing more than a letter of interest. It's got very onerous conditions in it. It's subject to various conditions being fulfilled. And furthermore, the letter categorically states in no uncertain terms that this is not a binding offer, it is merely a letter of interest. Now, when the liquidator saw this, we have to now weigh this against the offer that we have from Orkney, uh, from Aurora as far as Orkney is concerned, and from Harmony as far as the Free State is concerned. We reported to the IDC, which we have to do, we reported to the IDC, which is the major secured creditor, and we did not, in our view, we did under no circumstances give an impression or give an undertaking as to or an understanding as to what our view was. We said these are the facts and this, the major secured creditor, the IDC, must give the liquidators a direction. On the 28th, which was the Friday, the very Friday where we were going to sign, when we had to sign the agreement with, with, with Harmony, we received a further letter from the IDC in addition to their verbal instruction to us, and that letter said categorically, we want you to go ahead with the Harmony deal. Mr. Ntseli, are you happy with what you're hearing? Yeah, uh, Standard Bank did call us, and uh, I did say, say to Standard Bank, Sandra, this thing is under provisional liquidation. I'm still raising the fund. As soon as I get money, I'm going to come back into, and it took a long time. The, the, the liquidators, the first liquidation was in March, they themselves were postponing it because they couldn't clinch the deal. So it was open. Uh, whether I call it 11th hour or 12th hour, I didn't know the agreement between them and, the, and Harmony. So all what I knew, as soon as I got money, I must sub, uh, say I've got money. And coming back to the money issue, because of the history of uh, the people that disappointed us, they said myself, proof of finance. Now, Chinese African Development Bank, that balance sheet is big. They're also partners with Standard Bank. Nobody can say we don't have uh, proof of funding. Secondly, I mean, the guys that uh, got the bidding in Orkney, with due respect, they don't have money at this point in time. There's a guarantee somewhere in Malaysia that uh, from a private equity, I don't know how it works. So all what you are saying, and we're stopped from doing due diligence from that time. Had we been given a chance to go to free state, I think today we'll be speaking a different story altogether. And we're still asking them to give us a chance that they are doing to everybody. 